Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. Previously, I made a video on how to create a live and persistent PopOS 20.04 USB stick. Now, I've had some positive comments on that video, but also where people try to do it with PopOS 21.04 and it seems that the process is a little bit different I think primarily with the name of one of the partitions and also one person that said that it failed so as my previous video also had a low audio volume I decided to do a new video with PopOS 21.04. So we're going to follow the same article as last time from Randall Rainsford on medium.com. I will also leave the link in the description of this video. So you can install make USB with the commands here and also gparted. You can download PopOS from the System76 website. And when you click on download, you can see that you can choose between 21.04 and 20.04 LTS, the long-term support. And also choose if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or not. So I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I just went with the default one. I already downloaded it so we can save some time in this video. And I also already plugged in a USB stick. And the next thing you can do is start GUI DUS. Well here it says like you can start it from the terminal but you can also start it from here, click the icon, fill in the password. Here is the warning that your target device will be completely overwritten. So far, I only got the option to choose a USB stick. So probably make sure you only have one USB stick in your computer so you can't choose the wrong one. So we're going to install. You can click it or type I. And we go for persistent live. It says only Debian and Ubuntu, but it also works for PopOS, but with PopOS you have to do some manual changes. So we'll go with P. And as I said, I already downloaded the image. So we'll go with the 21.04 image. And as I said, I only get the option to choose my USB stick. So that's okay. Yes, I really want to overwrite this device. You can go with use defaults. Well, you can change how much storage you want reserved for persistence and how much for other storage. Well, I'll just go with 50-50. So, yes, I want to go ahead. Click go. So now it starts installing the ISO image on the USB stick and also create the needed partitions. So this is going to take a while I'm 
a little bit too lazy to do some video editing but I will set up the chapters with the timestamps in the description so you can skip easily to the parts that you are interested in because this well is not really that interesting there is some stuff going on in the background but I don't think that it makes much sense for most of the people so but the good thing is is that um, I already tried this process before I created this video and I was able to boot from the USB stick I uh, got to the point where the first Pop! OS screen uh, was visible on my laptop and I will also leave a link uh, to the video where I boot Pop! OS but in that case 20.04 and also from a different USB stick but it shouldn't make much difference so meanwhile we can have a look here and hopefully we get to the point where it says work done and also where we do the manual stuff And so far, I haven't really tested Pop! OS 21.04. Um, I'm the kind of person that prefers to stick with the LTS version. And since Pop! OS is a rolling release, then at least you get... Uh, recent kernels also with the LTS version so that is the most important thing for me but at least you have the option to go with the newer version I think they also um, made some changes to the look and feel of Pop! OS and perhaps you like that better than the older version who knows Well, this part is almost done. I think it's not fully done yet, but at least you see that there's still some progress. And I think we're getting towards the end and now it says work done so we can quit quit and enter to finish so what you need to do now is look for the partition formatted to ext4 so we're going to start gparted fill in the password so 
So this is my internal SSD and this is the USB stick. So you see this partition here and now you also see the difference. It is formatted to X4 file system, but it's called writable. Now, in this example, it's called Casper Pop OS 19. So what it says is that you need to rename it to Casper dash uh, RW. So here we need to label the file system. So we'll call it Casper dash RW. And then we apply all operations. And that is all you have to do with Gparted. Oh, and it also says that you need to take note of your USB boot partition. So, especially that number. And now we need to make some more manual changes. So we go to the terminal. And it says that you need to create a directory boot. Well, since I already did this before, I already have a boot directory. So I don't need to make their boot, but I do need to do the other stuff. So that's sudo mount def stp3 boot, fill in the password. And now we need to change the grub config. So you need to find the menu entries. Well, I'm only going to change the persistent live menu entry. And here it says what you need to change. And that it should look something like this. So what you need to change is boot is Casper and then we also say live media path is slash Casper and do note that there's an underscore here so this is all you could say one word or at least there's no space here and you can also add a host name and username. 
So we'll just go towards the end. And we'll just follow the example of hostname popOS and username popOS. So do note that I put a space there and that for some reason you need those two dashes at the end. And that should be it. So we click on save. And just to keep things tidy, you can unmount boot. And that should be all. Um, yeah, it, it works for me. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, then yeah, please let me know where the things are different for you. And I will try to help. But this is all for now. And I hope you can do this too without any problems. And I hope to see you again in my next video.